Tom Hartman here on the news. You need to know this. Just a few days after the Japanese prime minister declared the nuclear crisis of Fukushima is over, there's shocking new evidence that the disaster may have led to the deaths of as many as 14,000 people in the United States. According to a new peer-reviewed study published in the December edition of the International Journal of Health Services, researchers found that there were 14,000 excess deaths in America in the 14 weeks after the Fukushima meltdown, and they believe these deaths can be traced back to radioactive fallout. Most of the deaths were infants under the age of one, and studies show that despite infant death decreasing by more than 8% this year in the weeks leading up to Fukushima, infant death in America increased this year by nearly 2% in the weeks after Fukushima. A similar phenomenon was studied in Chernobyl in 1986, where more than 16,000 excess deaths, excess deaths were reported weeks after the meltdown. Numbers by the Center for Disease Control back up this study, finding that deaths in America's biggest cities spiked 4.5% from last year in the weeks after Fukushima. Sadly, we're just scratching the surface when it comes to how dangerous nuclear power is, yet we keep subsidizing reactors with our tax dollars. This is insanity. Our kids are screwed. According to a new study by the National Center for Family Homelessness, there are currently 1.6 million children homeless in America. That's one in 45 kids, one per school classroom. That number has soared since 2007, alongside skyrocketing CEO pay and historically low taxes on the very, very rich. We might be the wealthiest nation on the planet, but the problem is that 40% of all our wealth belongs only to the richest 1%, creating a wealth inequality gap greater than what was seen even in ancient Rome. The generation that grew up under Roosevelt's era of the great middle class will bequeath to the generation that grew up under Reaganomics, a nation that looks more like a Roman slave state. Time to roll back the Reagan tax cuts. In the best of the rest of the news, late last night, House Republicans delayed a vote on the payroll tax cut extension for 160 million middle-class Americans that's set to expire at the end of this month. But today, Republicans will move forward and vote to kill that tax cut for average people, just as the Tea Party wing of the Republican Party wants. According to the group Macroeconomic Advisors, if the payroll tax cut is not extended, then our economy could lose 400,000 jobs and GDP would drop by half percent. The Republicans are full tilt boogie into their plan to crash the economy and blame it on Obama for the 2012 election. As a result, 160 million Americans are going to be hit with a $1,000 tax increase next year. I call it the Tea Party tax increase. It's raining cash on Wall Street. Seven of the biggest banks in America, including Bank of America, Citigroup, and Goldman Sachs, are on pace to break an all-time record in CEO bonus pay. According to two new reports, bankster bonuses at the big banks will top $156 billion this year, breaking last year's CEO bonus pay record. Of course, the only reason these banksters can give themselves such lavish bonuses is because we, the taxpayers, bailed them out three years ago, and then they refused to bail us out, but are taking the money and buying yachts. Instead of getting record bonuses, they should be getting record jail time. It was a big victory for consumers yesterday as AT&T dropped its bid to buy T-Mobile and dominate the wireless market as one giant corporation. Despite spending millions and millions of dollars on advertising and lobbying to hoodwink customers and lawmakers, antitrust officials at the Department of Justice and the FCC blocked AT&T's purchase, saying that it would hurt consumers and lead to less competition because one company would own 80% of the nation's wireless market. Since Reagan, there's been a merge, there's been an explosion of mergers and acquisitions in America, with transnational corporations growing bigger and bigger, and only rarely being stopped by officials who are actually enforcing the Sherman Antitrust Act. We need more enforcement of antitrust laws so that main streets across America can have character again and not be dominated by the same old transnational giants that pollute, pay their workers less, and ship their jobs overseas. The controversial software firm Carrier IQ just lost a big customer. After news broke a few weeks ago that Carrier IQ developed software currently sitting on over 150 million smartphones that logs private user information and sends that information back to the company, Sprint has announced plans to disable that software on 26 million phones. The decision by Sprint comes on the heels of, a new, of new pressure from the United States Senate as Senators Al Franken and Chris Coons wrote a letter to Carrier IQ demanding more information on their product. 
just in case you're using a phone that has Carrier IQ software like the Evo, the Vivid, or the Touch Pro 2, you might want to think twice about what you text. Crazy alert, the day TV jumped the shark. When it comes to reality TV, the Dutch have just won the race to the bottom. In the new reality show from the Netherlands known as Guinea Pigs, the two co-hosts agreed to dabble in cannibalism. That's right, what better way to get to know each other than to eat each other? The two hosts had tiny pieces of flesh surgically removed. One man had it taken from his belly, the other from his backside. The flesh was then sautéed, exchanged, and served up to be eaten. As one of the co-hosts said while chowing down, nothing is really that special when you're talking about the taste of meat, but it is weird to look into the eyes of a friend when you're chewing on his belly. I can't imagine. Let's hope that glint in Donald Trump's eyes when he looks at Rick Perry's scalp doesn't go any farther. And that's the way it is today, Tuesday, December 20th, 2011. I'm Tom Hartman on the news.